All right, folks, so I'm going to try to rip through this as quickly as I possibly can. I know I've been doing mostly Packers content. I'm trying to switch it up and um, shift what I do and how much I do of what, but I still want to do a lot of NFL draft content because that's how I started this channel. That's what I enjoy. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to try to do my first 2022 um, mock, and since uh, all of you basically told me last year that the graphics are nice but completely unnecessary, and that takes me a week to do all that, we're just going to do it this way. We're going to do it from scratch, and I'm just going to try to take you through the, my thought process, and you can leave me a bunch of comments about how much I'm an idiot, and uh, it'll be a great time. Sound good? All right, let's get going. So first of all, the um, order is not set by me, so don't scream at me about the order. Second of all, I did seven rounds. We're clearly not doing seven rounds. The only reason I did that is if I really feel the need to do a trade, which I probably shouldn't for the sake of time, not smart. But if I want to, I can do a trade into multiple rounds. If you set this up to do one round, they don't give you any of this, and then you can't do any trades that make any sense. Um, so I just like to do seven rounds, and we'll just stop when we get to 32. And then this board over here, again, not my board, and I think a lot of this is silly, but um, I'm going to try to generally stick to it. So um, anyways, right out of the gate, I think it's fairly obvious what we're doing here. We got uh, the Houston Texans. Granted, you can do just about anything, but um, unless you are a Deshaun Watson truther and think that he's going to be exonerated and he's going to come back and everything's going to be hunky-dory, which is fantasy land, our guy is going to be Spencer Rattler. Now, it doesn't have to be. If you look at quarterbacks, Sam Howell, who I think is going to be plummeting down the boards, maybe not forever, but he had a pretty bad week, so that would be silly of me to put him in here. Um, you could be, I mean, there are a lot of guys here, Malik Willis truthers, Carson Strong truthers, Slovis never belonged. He used to be like number three. He was a top 10 guy. And I said on this podcast or the YouTube channel, I believe that that was stupid and he didn't belong there and he's never been that good. Although he did have a good week this past week. So we'll see how that goes. I, for one, am a Matt Corral truther. That's my thing. And he'll probably end up going in the first round because it's my mock and I do what I want. Um, you probably heard me on here last year in like uh, May, put him as like the third overall pick and people just crucified me. But um, I'm holding strong to that. But at this point in time, Spencer Rattler is the guy. So that's very straightforward. That's what we're going to be doing. Now for the Detroit Lions, again, you can go in a lot of different ways. I think if things had fallen a little bit differently, i.e. not the number two pick, not with some of these guys, the board set up the way that it is. I think you could argue that quarterback is on the board, but they put themselves in a position where they don't have to rush it. They have clearly demonstrated that they want to do a proper rebuild, which is, you know, kind of low and slow. You know, we're just going to kind of take it easy and do it the right way. They're starting with guys in the trenches and everything else. Um, if we had the number one overall pick, would I take Rattler? Yes, I would. If we had the number 10 overall pick and uh, Howell was still on the board or, or Willis or one of these other guys, would I consider it? Absolutely. But given the situation, and again, I don't know if I think that this is how it's going to lay itself out, but I'm going to go with Thibodeau here. Um, I think he may end up falling down the boards. We'll see how it goes. Everybody says he's a freak, but if you look at PFF grades, if you look at his stats, his stats are not that good. His grades are not that good. He did have a lot of pressures, but his sacks, he had like three sacks last year or something. I'm just a little iffy. I want to see how that pans out. Oh, by the way, I think tackling is just putrid. The guy against the run is just absolutely horrible. So he's going to have to be an ace as a pass rusher. Uh, but at this point in time, again, I'm going to stick with the board that they give me. Everybody at this point says he has a very, e no, I shouldn't say everybody, but he has become a consensus number one, at least from the rumblings that I hear out there in the universe. So I'm going to give them that true edge pressure guy. Makes sense for their identity too. Just mean, trenches, domination, violent, you know, just just smash you in the mouth kind of a, a, of a team. And you can't really be that when your defensive line just sucks. So this is what we're doing. As for the New York Jets, and I've, if you don't know, there, there's a couple different resources that I like to use, um, specifically when I'm not talking about the Packers, because I don't know your team as well as you do, which is why you need to hit me up in the comments. Try to be nice, otherwise I'm just, I'm just going to keep picking the same guy for your team, because I'm petty like that. But PFF has got a nice little thing here where I can look at um, the exact layout of your uh, depth chart and um, your roster when they were drafted, um, their grades, how they've done by season. And then I've got um, a premium subscription to Over the Cap here where I can look at your depth chart and, you know, when these guys are going to be leaving your team, all those kinds of things. Um, based on what I'm seeing here, the top guy on the board, and I don't want to just go top guy on the board all the time, but the top guy on the board is cornerback. And so the question I have to ask myself is, 
is there any reason to pass up on Derek Stingley? Now, Kyle Hamilton is, is one of my favorite guys in this draft class, so I'm, I'm very interested in going in that direction. But I am curious, based on this board, is there any reason? And I'm looking at the cornerback group, and I'm looking at what? Uh, we got Bryce Hall, 2020 fifth round pick, who had a um, subpar year, according to PFF. You got uh, Guidry, who was a 2020 undrafted free agent. Hardy, who was a 2017 undrafted free agent. Ballantine, who graded out in the 30s, which is pathetic. Uh, sixth round pick in 2019. We've got another undrafted free agent in 2020. Um, an undrafted free agent in 2021, a sixth round pick in 2021, a fifth round pick in 2021, and another fifth round pick in 2021. We haven't done very much to bring in a lot of talent at the cornerback position, and I feel like that's biting us a little bit. And really, when I look at the lineup, I don't hate everything. The offensive line is promising. We got our quarterback, we got our wide receivers. I like our defensive line. We've got some talent at linebacker. At the very least, we have May at safety. I wouldn't mind getting Kyle Hamilton to go across from May, but it doesn't feel as necessary as can we please, for the love of all things holy, just get a corner in here. So if I'm, if you're asking me, this is a perfect setup for me. The number one thing I want on this team is a cornerback. Derek Stingley's sitting right here. We're taking Derek Stingley. Um, as we do more of these mock drafts, I'll kind of dive in a little bit. Derek Stingley didn't have the greatest year ever. In fact, he may fall. Derek Stingley, when he first came out, he's one of those guys, this is one of the greatest players we've ever seen. As a rookie, he was great. Second year in the in college, he was not super great. And then his first week at LSU, kind of bad. I think it was something like two targets, two receptions, and a touchdown or something crazy like that. It just, it, it didn't pan out super well. But um, again, for the time being, that's what we're going to do. Next up at pick four, we've got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, Evan Neal's next on the list, and again, it's it's almost lining up too perfectly. I feel like last year, people didn't like when I kept pushing tackle on the Jaguars. And listen, I, I think there's a couple things we could do here. Cornerback isn't looking great. I know we've invested in the position. Uh, guys like Henderson, who were pretty terrible last year, and there were rumors, I believe, of him possibly being traded. Uh, Herndon and Griffin, all of which are terrible. Um... So we, we could look at a couple different things. We could go defensive line, try to get a little bit of bolster that, pass rush, et cetera, et cetera. But it, we just drafted Lawrence, right? And we got some wide receivers. We don't have super elite wide receivers, but I like Chenault. I like DJ Chark. Uh, I like Robinson, the running back. I don't hate these guys. And tight end would be nice if this wasn't pick four overall. But I'm looking at Cam Robinson, who has been pathetic for four years, who was a second, I get he was a second round pick, but he's been terrible. And then we got Jawan Taylor, who's another guy. Well, hey, he was a second round pick too. We've already invested in it and it's only been two years. Yeah, but he's been bad for two years and he was worse last year than the year before that. Why are we messing around? We got Trevor Lawrence. Let's try not to ruin him. We need a tackle. Well, what are we going to do with the guys we have? I don't care. I don't care. Cam Robinson's been around for four years. Okay, this is the last year of his contract. Seems pretty straightforward to me. We're going to let Cam Robinson walk. Again, seems pretty straightforward. Evan Neal is our guy. Going to be protecting the blind side for our new quarterback. Congratulations, everybody. We did it. We're, we're successful now, hopefully with a new head coach, but that's a separate story. Thank you all for coming to my talk. So this one's a little bit interesting when we talk about the Philadelphia Eagles because I don't exactly know where Eagles fans stand, and I know I need to tread lightly because you guys are vicious. But <laughs> I... I have a feeling we're ready to move on, and we got some good quarterbacks to pick from here. I have a feeling that Jalen Hurts, and, and and again, we can edit this as we go along if he's having a great year, and we need a lot of different things, so maybe you could take the the line that it's not Hurts' fault. Uh, you know, we just we need some other things, but we just drafted Smith. We just drafted Rager. We brought in Watkins. We've been doing everything we can to bring in wide receivers, and for some reason, Ertz included, nobody seems to be doing very well. Maybe it has something to do with the quarterback. The other issue that I have is the offensive line. Not that it's bad, but the fact that we got guys like Lane Johnson, who are 31 years old. We've got Jason Kelsey, who's almost 34 years old. Um, we've got a lot of guys that are getting up in age that we got to figure out what to do with. Brandon Brooks is 32 years old. So from the center to the right, fantastic group, but they're all 30s. And then the guys to the left, eh, you know. But again, we're in a pretty good position with only one quarterback off the board so far. And again, we can go in different ways. And I'm actually curious to hear what people are thinking because I have a feeling a lot of people are 100% out on Sam Howell, at least being in the top 10. But he is next on our board. 
And so I'm probably just going to lean that way because it feels a little bit more safe. To be fair, he was he was dynamite last last year. I'm willing to give him one bad week and see how he rebounds. Um, if he continues to fall, he continues to fall. I'd love to throw my guy in there, but, you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to go with Sam Howell. I'm going to say that that's our guy. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll gauge these reactions. Let me know what you think in the comments. Cincinnati Bengals coming in at number six now. Um, another team where you look at it and say, man, we can do pretty much anything. The, the real unfortunate part here is I would love to give you Kyle Hamilton. That's maybe the one thing you don't need. But linebacker, I'd love to help you there. Anywhere along the defensive line, I'd love to help you there. Cornerback would be fantastic to be able to help you there. And probably the most important would be offensive line. I think you had a great opportunity uh, last year to get a offensive lineman. You insisted on getting Jamar Chase. I know the fan base and everybody seemed to be pretty split on that. I was absolutely not in the Jamar Chase camp. Seems that I was correct, although um, the offensive tackle doesn't seem to be doing very well either. So we'll have to see how that pans out. But what's done is done. The question is, what do we do moving forward? We do have Kenyon Green. I was doing a test mock draft earlier, and although it says interior offensive line, he is currently, as in as of week one this season, playing right tackle. So that is a consideration for us. We could possibly do that, but not super fantastic. And we do have Reef. Um, Let's see, Reef is going to be, uh, it's a one-year deal, so that we could possibly go that route. So that's in consideration. If we go down the list, though, again, safety probably not the best option. Jesse Bates is in the final year of his contract, but there's no doubt in my mind he was graded as the number one safety in football last year that he will be back. Um, Bell has got one more year left after this year, so we don't, so safety is the one thing I'm not interested in. The Marvin Leal, just, again, we're going to go with the board that we're given here, um, is an option. Oh, actually, it's Drake Jackson. Drake Jackson, I think, is kind of terrible. I don't know why he's in the top 10. I don't understand anything about Jake, Drake Jackson. He's not good against the run. He is not at all a good pass rusher, but whatever. He'll end up going because it is what it is. Coffee break. Um, but defensive line does make sense. DeMarvin Leal could be an option. Kyra Alam is a very interesting option. If we go up here, I want to look at your roster real quick. Just make sure I'm not missing anybody because sometimes, you know, you draft a guy and I forget about it. So you got Trey Waynes. Don't expect much out of that. Um, otherwise, Darius Phillips, whatever. Um, Chidobe Awuzie has not been great. He's been quite bad. Jalen Davis, undrafted free agent, bad at football. Mike Hilton, undrafted free agent, not great. Eli Apple, was a first-round pick for, I think, a bunch of different teams. I know he started in New York, and I think he went somewhere south, Jacksonville or something stupid, and apparently he's with you now. Still terrible. Um, Donnie Lewis, seventh-round pick uh, in 2019. Had, didn't do anything last year. Nick McLeod, undrafted free agent. Tony Bra So nobody's good. None of these guys are very good. Um, so I would love to, again, get you an offensive lineman, but... I don't know if that's exactly our best option. So we got to choose between Kenyon Green coming in at right tackle. And, and again, he can kick inside because he did play guard in all the previous years, which is why, again, he's listed as an interior offensive lineman. But I feel like, I don't know, man. I feel like we're, we're stretching it a little bit. And Elam really makes sense because we don't really have a lot there. Leal would also make sense. Um, let me just look at what we did off the edge real quick, if we did anything at all. Um, I know we have some guys. We got Trey Hendrickson, who came over from the Saints. Um, what is his situation contractual? Uh, see, everybody here is under contract for a long time, so I don't think I'm going to touch that because, I mean, nobody is up for contract at all. So we're not touching that. We'll leave that alone. I'm not a huge fan, but it is what it is. If we're going to do defensive tackle, fine, but not edge. <sighs> I feel like that's our... I mean, obviously, we're not going wide receiver, so it's kind of be... I, I feel like Elam is going to be our next best thing even though it feels stupid because we have to get an offensive lineman at some point to help out Elam just makes a lot of sense to me so I'm just going to pull the trigger I don't know that was my first tough one and, and what I would normally do if I wasn't feeling pressure to kind of rip through this I would probably want to do a trade just to you know a short trade back see who's left get a little bit extra value because we do need a lot of stuff but I'm just going to take the best available at a position we absolutely need and that's going to be Kair Alam. I haven't watched him, so I don't exactly know how to pronounce his name, so feel free to kill me on that one. All right, now it is time officially for the Raiders, and again, I would love to go Hamilton. I really would. I would love to be able to say, you know what, Hamilton is our guy. 
and uh, it just is what it is. We'll just have to make do, even though maybe that's not our biggest need at the moment, but I just can't. We've taken so many swings at this one position, and we have holes everywhere else. It's the one, I shouldn't say it's the one place we can't go, but I can't do it, man. Um, not only did we just in 2019 select Jonathan Abram in the first round, granted he's not very good, but that's one example. We got in the second round Trayvon Morig and followed that up with Tyree Gillespie. And again, um, I just can't. I just, there, there's no way I can do that. So um, as I continue to look at this team and our available options, DeMarvin Leal does make a lot of sense. By the way, for those of you curious, because it says defensive lineman, like, well, why didn't you take a defensive tackle for the Bengals? He's an edge rusher. Some of these are not exactly correct. Again, he was a uh, Kenyon Green was a guard for his entire career, but um, is now playing right tackle. So use that accordingly. This site has him listed as a defensive lineman. Um, he is not. He's an edge rusher. And that's a common theme with quite a few of these guys. I know this is being updated as we go along, but I actually reached out to him and I was like, you've got about 17 defensive tackles listed in the first round and almost every single one of them is actually an edge rusher. But that is a completely unnecessarily long story. I do like the idea of bringing in an edge here. I, I feel like the Raiders, first of all, defense is where we got to go. We've invested a ton in the offense. Derek Carr, a lot of people would love to get a new quarterback. I believe the Raiders when they say they like Carr, although I think if an opportunity arose, they'd probably move on. But I mean, PFF had him as the 10th ranked quarterback with an 84 overall grade. I just don't see him. Maybe he's sort of a Kirk Cousins where, yeah, he looks fine at times, but he's never going to get you over the hump. Maybe. I don't know. But that's a separate conversation for a separate time. We've got the offensive line in place. Probably need to tweak a couple things. But for the most part, it's solid. Lever Leatherwood, Incognito. Mil Is Incognito still really there? That's crazy. 38 years old. He's never had a bad year. In fact, second highest graded year ever was in 2020. Some of these guys are like Jason Peters and stuff. These guys are just insane. Jacobs, obviously, great running back. Waller, unbelievable tight end. We went out and got rugs. Great news for uh, uh, Edwards. Renfro took a big step. Um, so the offense is ready to go, but we just suck as far as our ability to get defense. We went out and got Littleton and Kwiatkowski, who are the top two free agent linebackers. They're both terrible. Uh, we drafted Abram. He's not good. Um, who's the edge rusher? Why can't I see him here? Uh, go to the roster, go down to the edge. What is your name, sir? Cleland Furl. Oh, he did get better last year. So he took a little bit of a step, but Max Crosby seemed like he was going to be something. He did not have a good year. Yannick Ngakwe, we brought in. God knows why. That guy, we, we thought we would have learned our lesson is not great. Um, and then the defensive tackles, likewise, we're not getting what we need. So we got to do something, and I like to go in the trenches. And I don't know if you can get any better than just getting a true premier edge rusher. I know we've taken a bunch of swings at it, but I don't think we're going to get much out of it. And even if we do get something from the guy who I just found out his name five seconds ago and already forgot, Cleland Furl. Um, there's nothing wrong with having two. So this is the direction I want to go. DeMarvin Leal, we're going to stack up that defensive line. Yes, we need corners. Yes, we need linebackers. Yes, our safeties suck. But again, we've taken a ton of swings. I just want a stud. And, and I want to go to the top of the board here. Not exactly Kyle Hamilton, because again, I just can't. But I know we don't have pass rush. I don't know that we don't have good safeties. I know we don't have enough pass rush. So... That's my rationale. Let me know what you think. All right, next up for the New York Giants, I think I'm just going to pull the trigger. And again, what everybody wants in mock drafts is draft the best available guy at the position that I think is the biggest need. And if I don't do that, you're going to call me an idiot. But let me tell you what also would make me an idiot. If Kyle Hamilton falls any further, I can't do it. And so I'm looking at your safeties, and you just don't have the guy. I love your defensive tackles. I would love to be able to get you a guy like Drake, Drake Jackson, even though, trust me, he's trash. You don't want him anyways. But just to give you that edge rusher that you want, um, maybe another corner to kind of help out with Bradbury. I'd love to kind of maybe bolster that offensive line just a tad. I know you guys are excited about your offensive line, but I just feel like safety is where we got to go. Just get you that true... Like, that, and that's the other thing too. It's one of those things where it's like, I don't, we don't need it. We need other things big. Just, just imagine it. Just go back to your favorite safety of all time. Just think about how great that guy was and how much he, he took over games. Whoever that might be, right? For me, Cheesehead, it's probably a guy like Charles Woodson. Whatever. Picture that guy. That's what I'm getting you in Carl, Kyle Hamilton. The guy's a freak. So don't get mad. Get excited. He, he, he should have never been available. He should have never made it out of the top three. You got him at eight. You're welcome. Have a great day. Next up, we got the Atlanta Falcons, and I'm I'm really not sure exactly how this works. As I look at the contract for Matt Ryan, I don't understand it. 
Um, he's like 40 some odd million next year. So it's like, well, we obviously got to get rid of him, but it's going to cost like 30 million to get rid of him or something just stupid. I don't know. I don't know the logistics, but I just know we can't, we can't do this anymore. I'm going to get you a quarterback if that's all right. I don't know exactly what we do with this team. I know the defense is a, is, is a disaster. Very excited about Kyle Pitts. I tried to get him in all three of my fantasy football leagues. He got sniped one pick before me in my other league. He's probably going to be trash now because I cursed him because I've been talking him up so much to myself and on my Green Bay Packers podcast. By the way, Packernet Podcast, if you are a Packers fan, check it out. Um, and again, I don't know which direction you want to go, but I'm just going to go top of the board here. You guys are going to draft Malik Willis at number nine overall. So for the Panthers, very similar situation. Um, I don't really like our quarterbacks, and so I'm wondering. First, of, the, the the number one question that matters is, um, is there any reason not to draft a quarterback? <laughs> or, you know, for example, Carson Strong. It says, it says right here, I keep pointing at it, you can't see my fingers, 22. That's obviously a reach at 10. But is it, though? Like, you know, I I don't know. I said I was going to stick to the board, but maybe I don't care so much. Maybe I just don't care. Maybe I realize Carson Strong and Matt Corral and Ritter are are guys that are going to get a lot of love and are probably going to go a lot higher than they are. And I'm looking at the fact that we have Sam Darnold and the fact that uh, we've actually got some serious talent on this team with Christian McCaffrey, with Anderson, Moore, and Marshall. And we need to start taking advantage of that and not just keep messing around with guys like Darnold until the perfect quarterback falls into our lap in five years when all these guys are gone and we've been terrible. Now is our time to capitalize. These guys are great quarterbacks. I'm going to give you Carson Strong. You're welcome and have a nice afternoon. And so uh, after all that trash talking I did with the Giants, the Giants are back on the clock. I got you the best, arguably the best player in the entire draft, Kyle Hamilton, um, at pick eight. And now we're back, and now we can start looking at needs. And again, I don't like Drake Jackson. I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the uh, top 10 when this is all said said and done. Let me, because this is going to be a quick thing, let me just show you or at least tell you what it is I'm talking about with Drake Jackson so that those of you who think I'm just an idiot, let me just explain it to you. Um, so last year in 2020, he had 17 pressures and two sacks the year before 26 pressures and five sacks. He's had seven sacks in the last two years. And I understand 2020 was an abbreviated year, but 2019 was not. He had 26 pressures on 359 attempts. So if we do a little quick math here, uh, 26 divided by 359, 7% of the time he got to the quarterback, 7%. That's garbage. That is hot garbage. And you're thinking, well, is he at least a really good run defender? He's 6'4", 250, and no, he's not. Um, This past week, he actually had an 80.6 overall grade, which sounds great, but his really high grade came because of his coverage ability, which obviously is a fluke because there were three coverage snaps. Um, He had a 57 overall pass rush grade and a 56 overall run defense grade. That means he was subpar in both categories. Um, he had one tackle in the game. He had one pressure in the game. So whoop de doo The reason he graded out so well is because he had a pick. And the thing is, he's going to make all the highlight reels, and everyone's going to say, you better watch out for Drake Jackson. So he's not going to appropriately fall down the list. But anyways, he's fantastic, and so I'm going to have you draft. <laughs> no, it's only because we're sticking to the board as it is. But I just pausing this mock draft that we're doing, he ain't going in the top 10. There's no way in, my, in, in the world... I just see no way. There's nothing here that tells me this is even a a first-round pick in any capacity. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I got you an edge rusher. You're welcome. Pittsburgh Steelers now on the clock. Um, You know, we could go in a lot of different directions. I know Steelers fans really started to hate me last year. I I started to settle in, and and I was like, all right, fine, just take Najee Harris. And then you guys kind of forgave me a little bit, but... Um, ragging on your wide receivers a bit. You didn't seem to like that very much. Ragging on the fact that you need to get offensive linemen. I don't think you like that very much. It all is, is coming to fruition. Um, but there's there's a lot of work to be done here. Juju is in the last year right now. James Washington, um, Ebron, Roethlisberger, Haskins, and Dobbs, three quarterbacks. Uh, Balaj maybe doesn't care as much, but uh, Akorafor, uh, Trey Turner, a couple other guys down the down the line are up for contracts. T.J. Watt, I believe, is is potentially in the next couple hours or days in for a massive extension, if at all this year. If not next year, it's going to be beyond massive. 
Um, and so the corners, we got a ton of stuff. So there's a lot we need to do and there's a lot we need to work on. Um, the question though, again, for me is, is there any reason not to take a quarterback? And again, you could say, yes, of course there is because there's no good quarterbacks. But again, I think this guy is going to be a top 15 talent at the very least. And so if you're the Steelers at 12, are you not going to take a top 15 quarterback? I think you will. Now we could look at our other options and say, well, we got a guard slash tackle here. We got a wide receiver to fill in for whoever ends up not staying in Pittsburgh. I don't really know where you guys are at with that. Is Juju coming back? Is James Washington coming back? I don't know. Um, Again, any of these guys you can almost make a case for, but I'm just going to do what I want to do. I'm going to give you a very, very good quarterback that probably needs a little bit of work, you know, because he's in a very schemey system, not a very uh, NFL-ish system that you see very much, but I don't care. Mason Rudolph can take over for a year. Matt Corral can sit for a year as we continue to build our offensive line and our wide receivers. And next year, 2023, Matt Corral can take over, et cetera, et cetera. You know the story. There you go. It's a confusing situation on how to keep your guys head above water. Hopefully you guys can do a better job of it than I'm able to picture, but um, Godspeed. Next up, we have the Arizona Cardinals. Um, Boy, oh boy, very popular team, but there's clearly some work to be done here. Um, Specifically, I'm looking at the defensive side. I mean, obviously everybody is excited about Murray and about Hopkins and about Humphrey and probably a couple other people like Rondale Moore has is, is got to be exciting. Um, I do think the offensive line could use a little bit of work. Um, Calvin Beecham, 32 years old. Again, we've got Kenyon Green sitting here. We could slide him in there, get our guy a little bit more protection. But maybe we're looking at it saying, hey, we don't really run the ball and our guy's got some wheels. So what if there's pressure? We don't need a good offensive line. But okay, fair enough. Um, defensively, Boy, oh boy, I know I know JJ's there, and that's got to be pretty exciting, but I'm I'm not seeing a ton. And I've, I've gone over this before, and you guys get mad at me, but Marcus Golden has had one good year in his entire life ever. Um, Chandler Jones did not have a great 2020. I know he didn't play all that much, but, I mean, come on, man. The guy's injured. He's 31 years old. Maybe he's going to come back and dominate. Maybe him with JJ is, is going to be a great duo. Cool. But it's a great duo that's going to last for a year until they end up in a nursing home. Um you got Peters in the middle, Corey Peters. The guy's 33 years old. He's never been good at anything. Uh, Zach Allen, two years, never really proven very much. So, um, you know, guy like George Karloftis, um, defensive lineman, any of these guys, um, very strongly in consideration. Um, if we look at your corners, I know you've got Mr. Robert Alford, who has not been very good. Second round pick, that's not done very much. Uh, You got Byron Murphy, who took a step from being terrible to being mediocre. So perhaps that's an option. Um, Linebackers, the one linebacker and safety are the probably the one areas I don't really want to touch. Um, Not because Simmons had a particularly spectacular year, but because we drafted Simmons, we still expect him to be a dominant force in football. And we drafted Zayvon Collins. So probably not going to go that way. So... The question is, how strictly do I want to stick to my board? Should we just go Andrew Booth? Let me really quickly look at the roster, make sure I'm not about to do something stupid and you guys drafted somebody. Um, Again, we talked about... So we got 2021 fourth-round pick Marco Wilson, sixth-round pick Tay Gowan. Otherwise, I don't see much of anything. I'm leaning Andrew Booth. Um, I'm leaning Andrew Booth. And I feel like, you know, again, I could go defensive line, but I have a feeling you guys are obsessed with your own defensive line and think it's going to be dominant and elite. So you're not going to be mad if I don't do it. You're probably mad at me already for just even suggesting that it might not be an elite unit. I think that's where we're going. I think that's where we're going. I think we got to go cornerback, Andrew Booth, and um, hopefully we just score a ton of points and you can't catch up because we got some good corners. That, that'll be the strategy. Washington football team, again, it's one of those things where we could say, well, we need a uh, quarterback. I think we've kind of exhausted that. Again, we've got Slovis here, but I'm really not a fan of Slovis, so I'm probably not going to go that way anyways. um, I don't know exactly what we do. uh, Taylor Hinkie, Heineke, however you say that guy's name. I mean, he plays well when he's given opportunities, I guess, or we just let Fitzpatrick play another year because he's going to play until he's 80 anyways. Um. As far as what we should do, um, I kind of, I, it, it's weird because I feel like it's one of those teams where it's like, you guys just aren't good at stuff, but 
Fitzpatrick can make some magic happen. Fitz magic. I like your offensive line. I like your wide receivers. Um, defensive line in Washington, for some reason, is always very good. Uh, we've got Yamin Davis, or however you say his name. I, I affectuately call him affectuate, affectuately, affectuately, um, whatever. Call him Jamin Davis, because that's what it looks like, and it's a cooler way to say it. With that, safety, because Landon Collins was always a bad idea. And, um, you know, I mean, we do have Mr. William Jackson, I guess. So that's something. Kendall Fuller isn't all that. Is safety like our biggest thing? I feel like it might be. Um, linebacker, maybe, just because you need more than one. But I don't think so. I don't really want to do Olave. Kenyon Green doesn't make sense because, I mean, unless we want to kick him inside. But, uh, well, what? Scherf has got to go away, doesn't he? Are we, are we moving on from Scherf at some point? Because I feel like we keep tagging them and tagging them and tagging them, and eventually that's got to come to to an end. Um, and if we don't seem to want to pay him, maybe he's going to leave. Maybe Kenyon Green is the right option. But um, these, this is not a great... Again, this is a perfect trade-back situation. Um, your defensive line is just fantastic, so I'm not looking at that. There is a tight end opportunity here. Um, Logan Thomas, I don't think is much of an answer. What do we have? Again, I don't, well, we're at 14. 14 is decent. I was going to say, I don't want to go this early at a tight end. I think we're not quite in stupid territory with a tight end. Um, what do we do in 2021? We got fourth round pick John Bates. We've got undrafted free agent Sam, uh, Samus Reyes, whatever. Undraft, uh, that, that's a halfback there. So that's, that's about it. Um, otherwise, Fourth round picks are as high as we've gone at tight end. Maybe we should just do it. I mean, it's one of those things where we probably should trade back and do it. Um, but I just want to do it, man. I want to get a better offense. I like our defense. Let's just do it. Why not? Let's get let's get weird with it. Uh, Denver Broncos now. Um, I feel very strongly about what direction I want to go in. Again, Kenyon Green still sitting here. Great value at this point, but I don't think I want to do that necessarily. We could. Bobby Massey, uh, 32 years old, and the interior, mm, I don't know. But I don't think that's the direction I really want to go. Um, quarterback, obviously, is a consideration here. Who do we... So, again, I don't want to do that. I don't want Slovis. Maybe if you're a big Ritter fan or JT Daniels, but that's a little bit too much of a reach for me. I think with Vic Fangio at the helm... I would like to do a little something for him. I know you've got a couple guys there, but it's nobody super special. We've got the safeties. We've got a couple corners that we like. Um, we've got some guys along the defensive line. We've obviously got some pass rushers that are pretty solid. I'd like to get in a linebacker. And again, we're at 15. We're not in super stupid territory. Um, it's a good value overall. I would like to get a, a solid, and again, this is based on the board they're giving, not necessarily saying he's going to go here anyways, but... Um, According to this, if there's a linebacker that's worthy of number 13 overall, I think that's what I want to do. That's the direction I think I want to go. Eagles now back on the clock after drafting our quarterback of the future, Mr. Sam Howell. Um, and we've got a little bit more freedom to do different things. Again, I'm not really into wide receiver considering we've gone that direction. Um, I am leaning fairly heavily toward Mr. Kenyon Green, partially because he's just such a good value, but also, as I said... The offensive line is fine if you don't account for the fact that guys are getting quite old. Um, and so we're going to have to, at some point, recognize that. I mean, Lane Johnson um, is a free agent in 2026. But, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> he's he's 31 years old. We're talking about in five years. Uh, yeah, technically, well, he was injured, so I guess I don't know. But I don't know. It's a little bit iffy for me. Um and the fact that Kenyon Green is, is playing tackle and playing tackle at a high level and has the ability to play inside, meaning we have the potential to possibly put him at left tackle, left guard, right guard, or right tackle, and we just drafted a quarterback and need to do right by him. Um, the number one thing I care about with Sam Howell, protect him and get him some weapons. He has the weapons. We need to protect him. I'm going to go with Kenyon Green to the Philadelphia Eagles. Minnesota Vikings now on the clock. Um, the default everybody wants to do is go toward offensive line. So Tyler Lindenbaum is where everybody's going to be looking. I don't mind the offensive line as much. I think we've made some strides. 
you've got three wide receivers here, but you know, with with Thielen and Jefferson there, as much as a, a third wide receiver is needed because it's a massive fall off, Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson are obviously going to be on the team for quite a while. Pardon me. Um, so I just I'm not interested in going in that direction. However, um, one thing that I do think would be kind of important is uh, getting Mr. Daniil Hunter a little bit of help on the outside. And so I'm looking at a guy like George uh, Karloftis here, um, or Aiden Hutchinson, or my J. Sanders, whatever, doesn't really matter. That's kind of the direction I want to go, though. And because he's highest on the list, I think that's what I'm going to do. But I want to get this defense back up and running. Now, cornerback is also incredibly important. But as you can see, we don't have a huge amount of options here until we get all the way down here, down here. I think I just want to go with the top guy. They've been bringing in edge guys and edge guys and defensive tackles and all that, trying to bolster that as much as they can. And um, it's clearly a priority for them to um, try to get that up and running. So we're going to try to help them out with a uh, draft pick of George Karloftis. Next up, we've got the LA Chargers on the docket. Um, kind of an interesting thing here as I'm looking at this Chris Olave obviously falling down the board quite a bit and as you look at it you think well you don't really need that you got Keenan Allen you got Williams and all that um I think I want to go that direction I think I do want to go Chris Olave obviously Keenan Allen's going to be sticking around for quite a while um but Mike Williams is an undrafted free agent after 2021 now maybe they're going to bring him back he's only 27 but even so I don't know that that's not the the best option here especially when you consider the value could also go Garrett Wilson if you're looking for a different style um, I know Keenan Allen plays a lot in the slot and that's also probably going to be a little bit of competition with Chris Olave let me see if I can pull that up very quickly what percentage he's inside what percentage he's outside uh, if we go to his receiving so he plays in the slot it's only 28 percent of the time so they could be interchangeable I suppose um so right now he's playing uh, out wide 72% of the time. Um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it, it is close with Garrett Wilson, though. How did he do? So he had a 80.6 overall grade, four receptions, 117 yards, and two touchdowns against Minnesota. That's pretty wild. Let me just look really quickly at Garrett Wilson. Just I doubt he did anywhere near that well, although he very well may have. Nah, 63 overall grade. Uh, he had two drops in that game 11 targets five receptions five of 11 two of those were dropped that's kind of terrible 80 yards and a touchdown is fine but yeah we got to go with chris Olave. um we'll figure out the scheme aspect of it but um getting our wide receiver or, or our quarterback a little bit more help once again um a couple other areas i was considering but you know i mean we've we've kind of done some stuff with linebacker already i don't think i want to touch that um, obviously Adderley and James at safety, although things haven't panned out as we'd necessarily like, we're not touching that. Asante Samuel at uh, corner is kind of an area that we've already dealt with. Chris Harris is there, even though he's getting old and didn't have the greatest year last year. Um, still not an area I necessarily want to touch. So although I wouldn't say it's a weakness, I do think it's an area where we can make a strength even stronger and help out our young quarterback to just kind of turn this into a pretty dominant group. At number 19 now, we've got the New Orleans Saints on the clock. Quarterback, again, needs to be somewhat of a consideration, but I don't really know if that's the direction I want to go. We've at least got some guys that can handle their business. Now, Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston, as well as Trevor Simeon, are all free agents after this year, meaning we'd have to put down some actual money to make one of these guys a starter, probably Jameis. Um, I don't know if we want to go that route, but again, we're kind of to the point now where, you know, do we want to go Slovis just for the sake of going Slovis or should we just keep Jameis and see what he can do and keep building and then when when we get a better opportunity let's go ahead and take a swing I don't think I want to go Slovis right now um and so we could go for example Tyler Lindenbaum and um try to bolster that but we already got Ruiz in the first round last year he didn't pan out super well but so what we already tried let's keep that going we got Armstead Ramzik or whatever so I'm not really looking that direction kind of similar to the Chargers I feel like the Saints aren't a terrible option I wouldn't mind going corner but we got a Debo last year uh the defensive line although we did lose quite a bit of people still fairly strong with Jordan and Davenport the defensive tackles especially got uh decimated I like our linebackers I like our safeties um assuming we can pay to keep 
the guys that we have, and why not? We, you know, we purged everybody already. We should be able to. I feel like adding a wide receiver to this group makes sense. Michael Thomas is there, but there's a lot of strife and a lot of controversy and a lot of weird stuff going on with that. And even so, so what? We don't have a real dominant number two. And uh, although you don't necessarily need it, the Saints were a solid group with just Michael Thomas and, and like a mid- middling number two. Why not? Why not get that next best guy? So I'm going to have Garrett Wilson follow immediately behind. Again, we can talk preferences. We can do all these things. It should have been Burks. It should have been whoever. We can go down this whole list. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I'm just following this. We can make tweaks as the weeks go on. I just want to get the first one at least um, under our belts here. New Orleans Saints now on the clock. Uh, Got a quarterback we really like. Got an offensive line we like. Um, what else we got going on? The defense always is fairly strong. Um, still got, let's see, we got edge rushers starting to bubble up. We've got Tyler Lindenbaum, Linderbaum, uh, if we needed to go that route, which I don't think we do. And of course we've got another wide receiver, which is in strong consideration in my mind at this particular point in time, really wouldn't mind getting some help off the edge though. Um, Kyle Van Noy is, let's see, 30 years old. He's got one year left in 2022. Chase Winovich is 26 with one year left, probably going to re-sign him. But even so, I don't know that um, these are necessarily super dominant guys. we got some guys that are getting up in, in age that we're going to have to replace. Devin McCourty, 34 years old. So we can look at a guy like Jordan Battle as a possible replacement there. Um, at the cornerback position, J.C. Jackson is there. Um, Jonathan Jones had a really good year last year. Um, so we... we we're kind of, we're not really like desperately weak anywhere that I can see. I would like to get some help along the defensive line, but we don't really have defensive tackles. Again, we got a bunch of edge guys in uh, Hutchinson and Sanders and Zach Harrison, and you can never really go wrong with that. Even if you say, no, we got some good guys. Yeah, but you don't have TJ Watt. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that's what Aiden Hutchinson is, but if I describe them to you in that way, um, you kind of understand why if I go that route, that would be why I go that route. Um, and so really the only thing that's keeping me from taking a guy like Aiden Hutchinson is Traylon Burks, because I don't exactly know what we're doing at wide receiver. That's going to super scare anybody. Um, what do we got here? We've got in 2021, did we do anything? A seventh round pick? That's it. Um, in 2020, a uh, free agent, a seventh round pick, and nothing. Um, we don't have a lot. We got Nikhil Harry, who was a first round pick in 2019. That is a suspect situation. Nelson Aguilar, who whatever was a first round pick at one point, is there, but I don't expect that to do very much. So I, I do think I'm going to go that route. I, I think although an edge rusher would make a lot of sense, I feel like we've got at least competent edge rushers whereas wide receiver I worry again with a young quarterback if it wasn't necessarily a young quarterback you could say well edge is more important but I'm gonna go ahead with Traylon Burks and uh, make that the pick du jour. Eagles on the clock again at pick 21 after we ended up with Sam Howell and then got a little bit of offensive line help in Kenyon Green who's gonna be a versatile piece that we can plug in wherever it is we need them. Um, now looking at our group Um, we do have Tyler Linderbaum, who would have been an option, but we already got a guy that's going to be helping us in that capacity. I'm looking strongly at the edge rushers here. We do have Derek Barnett. Um, otherwise the more prominent guys, Brandon Graham, but again, he's 33 years old. Uh, we got guys like Fletcher Cox, who's 30 years old. Would be nice to get a little bit younger along the edge. I know maybe that's not your biggest need, but again, I want to stick a little bit to my board here. Um, Safety is in strong consideration with Jordan Battle. Um, I think cornerback should very strongly be in consideration with Ahmad Gardner. In fact, as much as our guys are getting old off the edge, I think DB is looking a little bit stronger. Let me just look really quickly at if we made any major additions that would make me think that we don't need to be doing this. Um, 2021 fourth round pick, Zach McPherson. Don't care about that at all. Uh, Mac McCain, undrafted free agent. That's it at cornerback. Um, obviously, we got Darius Slay, who doesn't do squat, and some other guys that don't really do anything. Um, safety, 2021, we got nothing. Uh, 2024th round pick, Kayvon Wallace, who was not good. 
Um, 2020 undrafted free agent Elijah Riley. So not much there. I do think cornerback is probably a little bit more important. So I'm actually going to go ahead and swing in Ahmad Gardner as our third and I believe final first round pick. Yeah, so we did a lot of damage today, man. And I know this is important. We probably could have gone Kair Alam here, but I got us a quarterback, got him some protection and still ended up getting us a corner in the first round. Hopefully you guys are at least halfway satisfied with what I got you in your three gigantic massive haul of a first round pick in 2022 all right dallas cowboys now on the clock um i don't know what to make of the cowboys i had an interesting conversation when i was doing the live stream with the cowboys fan he was kind of giving me some crap about you know i had made some comments and he didn't necessarily agree that's fine i i think in general big picture i like the offense i don't like the defense and you can talk nuance and you can talk about contracts and all those kinds of things but you got prescott you got cooper you got gallup you got lamb um, obviously we've got Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, we've got some pieces along the offensive line, some very, very good, but old, some guys young and promising. However you want to parse that out, that's sort of the way, the way that it goes. Um, the defense though, I think is, is the issue. Um, Trayvon Diggs, I know Cowboys fans love Trayvon Diggs, 62 overall grade. So he was fine. A lot of promise, but not exactly like, oh, we're completely fine there, especially since that's just one guy and we have other positions to fill. Um, Defensive tackle, I have some questions about. Uh, Brent Urban, seemingly graded out pretty well. Fourth round pick from back in the day. But I don't know what else we exactly have. Uh, Lawrence, obviously, is a fantastic football player, and he's going to be there for a very long time. Uh, opposite Demarcus Lawrence, we do have Randy Gregory, but I don't think he's even going to play. I, I, there's just, I, I thought I heard something already that he's not going to play, but if that didn't happen, it's probably just my subconscious reminding me that um, he's going to do something stupid and not end up playing anyways. So I don't think that's a thing. So I'm not opposed to getting an edge rusher because I want this defense really ramping up. And if Diggs really does become a premier corner and we can get some pressure, granted, we still need help at linebacker and safety and additional defensive tackles and corners, and we, we could add to and add to, but that's really the main thing for me. Um is is getting some solid coverage ability and pass rush um and we've got a, a few options here even jordan battle is an option um again just want to double check and make sure so for safety for example 2021 we got a sixth round pick and an undrafted free agent so we haven't really done anything recently i don't think he did anything in 2020 or other or 2020 either so safety is not something we've really done to, uh, to haven't tried to improve. And I know you guys have been swinging at that for several years. Um, Kazee was a fifth round pick back in the day, but he's even not all that fantastic. Um, but there's a lot of edge rushers here, man. And I know we got guys and Lawrence is fantastic, but Aiden Hutchinson is just staring me right in the face. I'm just curious real quick. I just want to see, cause I haven't looked yet how Aiden Hutchinson did in week one. It doesn't really matter in terms of whatever but it could sway me if he just absolutely dominated and he did 92.2 pass rush grade 93 overall in his first week four pressures on 22 attempts so he's at about 20 percent pass rush rate which is ridiculous did end up with one sack um just pretty much dominated i think that's the direction i want to go in no way am i saying that has anything to do with lawrence it's just i want to get him another guy and just kind of continue to smash that and just based on the board, we could go other directions, but that's what I want to do. I want to get Aiden Hutchinson. I want to get a pair of pass rushers that are just terrorizing people. Even if, okay, fine, we don't have the best corners. We don't have the best safeties. We don't have the best linebackers. I don't care. Best of luck to you because we're still going to wreck your world. Your, your quarterback is going to shudder in his boots when he plays us. That's what I'm shooting for. At the very least, hopefully we get enough big splash plays that our offense can compensate for whatever mistakes that they make. There's my thought process. Have a great day. Jets back on the clock after taking Derek Stingley to start things off. Um, again, I, I don't hate where we're at right now. Uh, we do have a safety again, Jordan Battle, that we could put opposite May. I love these edge rushers here. I really do. Um, being able to, to put somebody in there. I don't even know who are... I, I know we got a guy that was injured. He, it happened against the Packers. Sorry about that. I, I do apologize. But, um, I mean, Shaq Lawson, Carl Lawson, Vinny Curry... I don't know, man. I, I don't know that we have, I mean, aside from your one very good guy in, uh, is it, let's see, both of these guys are, no, they're fairly young. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I won't touch that, but I would like to get you a real premier guy. Um, probably not your biggest need, but it would be kind of cool. Um, 
I don't hate Linderbaum. Linderbaum. I don't know why I can't say his name. We did get Elijah Vera Tucker, though, last year. Uh, Greg Van Rotten is not fantastic, but we got the tackles taken care of. We got Vera Tucker in there now. Um, I don't know if we need to keep pushing, especially first round. We can hit those in other rounds. Um, do we want to, we could double up on corner. Um, we got Corey Davis at wide receiver, so I don't really think we need to go that route. We got Isaiah Spiller. Is there any reason why we would just completely shoot that down? Um, we did get, we get Elijah Moore in the second. Oh no, that's a wide receiver. You dumb idiot. Um, 2024th round pick LaMichael Pirine. We could go that route. It seems a little silly at pick 23 to go running back. Um, linebacker. Do we have anybody at linebacker? I don't think so. There's no really good linebackers here. 33 overall. Kind of a tough spot, man. I'm, I'm coming back to edge rusher here. We could double down on corner again, as I said. I don't know if we want to do that. We got uh, Dunn, who is an undrafted free agent. Is he seriously starting? Because now I feel like we need to double down. I don't know. This is one of those things where just, just drop in the comments. Let me know what you think, because I'm kind of stuck here. Uh, Linderbaum, I think, is an option, but I don't know if we want to keep doing that. Edge, I would love, but I feel like you got decent enough edge rushers when you guys are healthy, but I don't know. Jordan Battle may be filling in for Joyner because he hasn't really been doing much, but we, you know, I don't know. Trent Murphy, do we double down? I'm going to go my Jay Sanders. I'm just getting you an edge guy because um, that's what I want to do, and I have a feeling a lot of you aren't going to like that, but I'm just, I'm stuck, and again, this is this is round one. Let me know what you think. Next up, we've got the Tennessee Titans. And I'm, I'm pretty confident I know where I'm going with this one. Um, I do want to look very quickly, though. We got Rashad Weaver in the fourth round. We need edge rushers, man. We've needed edge rushers for a while. That's your biggest issue. I mean, Jeffrey Simmons is a fantastic football player, but off the actual edge, Harold Landry has not been getting it done. I don't think Rashad Weaver is going to be the guy. Bud Dupree, first round pick in 2015, has done nothing for us. Um, there's, there's just... There's no reason in my mind not to go edge. And again, I'm just going to take the top guy um, in Zach Harrison. I was going to look him up, but it, it's fairly straightforward. I'm fine with this one. We're going Zach Harrison. Cleveland Browns now on the clock at pick 25. Uh, another tough one because we've got really just, I mean, I still th I think the Browns have one of the best rosters in football. It's just one of those underperforming type of things. I think this is the best offensive line in football. So Linderbaum is out of the question. Um, I think Battle is out of the question. According to PFF, they had two top 10 safeties, number three and number nine. Um, cornerback, I don't think so. We just drafted Newsom. We have Ward on the opposite side, so that ain't going to happen. Um, we've got Garrett and Clowney out there uh, off the edge. We could say Enigbare because Clowney is just temporary, so we could go that route. Um, linebacker is the one area, obviously, where we need uh, something, but... Um, I mean, maybe let's look at who's up for contract here. Um, I mean, defensive tackle is another area I would love to get some help, but again, not a ton going on there. Jadavian Clowney is a one-year deal. He's not there in 2022. Takaris McKinley is not going to be there. So we are getting very thin outside of Miles Garrett. Um, wide receiver Odell Beckham still locked up for a while. Jarvis Landry is going to be having one more year in 2022, but we got Donovan Peoples-Jones still there, who's pretty solid. Um, or at least a potentially solid option. So uh, Denzel Ward's in his last year, but he's going to get paid. I feel like linebacker and defensive tackle with an outside shot at edge rusher because, again, Jadavian might not even be there next year, and that's what we're drafting for is next year. I think I am going to go over and look at what these guys have done and let that be the deciding factor. We're going to start with Enigbare and see what he did week one. Ooh, against Eastern Illinois – 95.6 overall grade only 17 snaps though he didn't play a ton but 94.7 pass rush grade two pressures on 10 attempts there's not a lot there but that's pretty solid um defensive tackle what do we got perry on winfrey next on our list let's see what perry on winfrey did week one um 76.2 overall grade played 36 snaps so he played a significant amount. he had five pressures on 27 attempts that's pretty insane. That's almost 20%, including a sack, two hits, and two hurries. One tackle, one assist, no missed tackles, one stop. That's impressive. The grades aren't that impressive. The stats are very impressive. Finally, let's look at our top linebacker on the board, Mr. Devin Lloyd. Let's see what Devin Lloyd did. I'm leaning Perry on Winfrey right now. 
Devin Lloyd, uh, 51 snaps at linebacker, played against Weber State, 75 overall grade, 70 coverage, 73 run defense, three pressures, which is a lot considering he pressured only nine times, so 33%. Um, including a sack and two hits. He had eight tackles, two assists, but he had two missed tackles, which sucks. I think I think our guy is going to be Perry on Winfrey. That's what I think we're going to do. Um, again, edge is an option. Linebacker is an option. I think this is going to be the guy, though. That's what I'm going with. Perry on Winfrey. Next up, we're getting down to the wire here at pick 26. Miami Dolphins are, in fact, on the clock. Um... Linderbaum is falling and is a fantastic value, so I have to start there and say, do we need some help along the offensive line? I know it's interior, but the very obvious answer is yes. And again, when we got a young guy like Tua, and maybe it's time for Tua to go. We are getting into Keaton Slovis territory where this is a place to do it, but I don't think I want to replace Tua right now, at least at this point in time. If he's, if we're middle of the season and Tua's been terrible, let's take a crack at it. But I'm looking at an offensive line that is just in complete disarray. Um... Some of these guys may be hurt or whatever, so let me just go through the actual roster as opposed to the depth chart. Um, did we draft anybody of significance? Uh, at guard, 2021 undrafted free agent Robert Jones. At center, nobody. At tackle, uh, 2021 undrafted free agent Keon Smith. We did get second-round pick Liam Eikenberg. That's it. You got to understand, though, and I would show you this, but I, I, I kind of can't. The highest graded offensive lineman from last year, maybe you don't care about PFF, but I don't care that you don't care, is Bobby Hart with a 66 overall grade. I can't work with that. Can't work with that. So we are going to go ahead and draft Tyler Linderbaum because we need to get our guy a little bit of help, and that's the end of that conversation. Next up, we've got the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I feel like one of the things that I need to strongly look at here is the contract situations because that's becoming sort of tenuous. When I, I, I feel like I have so many things in my brain that I already know about Baltimore, but it's all just, it's like mythology. Like, oh, they got such a good defense. And it's like, do they? I don't even know anymore. Um, Calais Campbell is there now, 35 years old, but he won't be there next year, or at least he's not supposed to be along with Justin Houston, Pernell McPhee, Brandon Williams, Patrick Ricard. You know, I'm just saying there's there's situations like that to consider. Wide receiver, I feel like they've done stuff. You know, Tylen Wallace, Devin Duvernay, Rashad Bateman. But um, I don't exactly know how much of that is going to materialize. And um, Sammy Watkins is obviously not planning on being there. Miles Boykin, Mar uh, Hollywood Brown in their final years. Lots to consider here. Jordan Battle is there. Um, we did draft Deshaun Elliott. I don't really know what you guys think of him. He's graded out as average. In two years, and he's a six-round pick, so I don't know if he's the kind of guy where it's like, whoa, pump the brakes, we can't replace him, he's so good. Um, again, age comes into into account when you start looking at the defensive line with 32 going on 33-year-old uh, Justin Houston, Calais Campbell, 35, he'll be 36 when we're talking about 2022. Um, even the offensive line, 33 going on 34, at least, again, next year, Villanueva, um, Zeitler, 32, um, so age is a factor in, in a lot of these things. <sighs> I don't know, man. I mean, Jordan Battle just doesn't feel right to me going safety because I feel like safety is decent enough. You got good corners. I like your corners. Again, I, I like a lot of the things. I just don't know who's staying and who's going, you know, wide receiver, maybe, I don't know who's staying and who's going. Um, what does corner look like? Marcus Peters obviously is going to be sticking around. I shouldn't say obviously, but I would assume he is at 28 years old, Marlon Humphrey. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to take Trent McDuffie. I don't know about Jordan Battle. Um, definitely not taking a running back. Edge rusher. Again, maybe. Who, who are the guys off the edge that are just like long-term options that are dominant? Justin Houston is not it. Pernell McPhee, again, is not uh, going to be there. Tyus Bowser. I feel like that's it. And, and, and it's also somewhat of an identity thing. I can't picture the Baltimore Ravens without solid defensive play. So I think I'm going to go with the guy highest on the board that makes the most sense to me, and that's Mr. Kingsley Anegbare. All right, now we've got the Green Bay Packers, the team that um, I like to say I don't even need to bring up my resources, but I'm going to bring it up anyways just as a, you know, just in case as far as contracts and whatnot. 
But what are we looking at? We got Jordan Battle. The only reason I would consider him is if we're moving on from Adrian Amos, which depending on the whole contract situation with these guys, he may be moving on. But we still have Savage. We got a couple guys. It's not like we're going to be dying. Um, Trent McDuffie, I can't imagine, is going to be a thing considering we have Jair and just drafted a guy in the first round. Isaiah Spiller, no chance in the world considering our running back group. Um, Jackson Kirkland is the first guy I'm looking at at offensive tackle that makes the most sense out of Washington. Um, I like our offensive line, but uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing on the podcast today is kind of going over, okay, let's say we get rid of Aaron Rodgers next year. Sad conversation, but we can get on the other side of the salary cap situation relatively quickly if that happens. And even if we don't, we can get on the other side of it. But one of the moves that I expect to happen is moving on from Billy Turner at right tackle. Doesn't have to happen, but I think there's a good chance that it does happen. It would be nice to get a legitimate long-term answer at right tackle. Now, also possible, however, as a rebuttal that many Packer fans would bring up, Elton Jenkins could very possibly move over to right tackle, um, making that kind of a moot point, which brings us past Jackson Kirkland, Charles Cross, and Zion Nelson, bringing us to Mr. Devin Lloyd. Um, Packer fans seem to love Chris Barnes. I do not. He graded out as the 71st ranked linebacker out of 83. Now, this is a defensive-minded linebacker coach that we brought in as our defensive coordinator. But at this point in time, we don't know that the guy's good. Um, obviously, Keaton Slovis, as much as it pains me to say, could be in consideration, but I'm not going to go that route because, again, we don't know that Jordan Love isn't going to be there. We don't know that Aaron Rodgers isn't going to be there. So I think the one thing that's standing out, again, offensive tackle may, does make sense, but let's go Devin Lloyd. We already looked at his stats and everything else, so we don't need to do that again, but I think we're going to go Devin Lloyd. We're actually going to take a linebacker for once, which will never happen in a million years. But uh, let's do it anyways. Let's say this new defensive coordinator who's a linebacker guy says, I want a good linebacker, and so that's what we're going to do. Detroit Lions back on the clock after their second overall pick, taking Kayvon Thibodeau, giving us that edge off the edge, um, bringing some, some heat in the NFC North, um, along with Flowers or whoever else we think is going to be there and interesting. Um, what do we do now, though, is the question. So again, Jordan Battle, who I think would be a fantastic option. I did like Walker for a while, but he um, not cutting it. And again, we got to see. This is a brand new regime. Some of these guys may be better in the system, but Tracy Walker, first year, 90 overall grade, one of the top graded guys. I'm like, this guy's good. Second year, 73, still good. The past year, 51. So Jordan Battle is an option. Um, linebacker, I don't think we have much there. That's a consideration, but we just got rid of a linebacker. Could we take a tackle? Probably not. We brought in Decker. We just brought in Sewell. Um, I don't think that's going to be an option. Wide receiver could potentially be an option. Um, we got to see about the guys that we have, but I don't think anything's overly impressive at wide receiver. John Mechie would be a kind of a guy, but we got Swift. We got Goff. To be honest, we could look at Keaton Slovis here. Again, we don't need to rush into that. But it's an option for a developmental guy if we think that he could be the guy. It's not a terrible value, but we probably should work on continuing to build this team. I think cornerback could potentially be an option because Okuda was so horrible, as was Amani Aruarie. But again, these are both guys that I think the Lions still feel semi-high on, especially Okuda. But you got to understand, out of 121 corners, Aruarie was 100th and Okuda was 115th. So if that doesn't change... That's what we're probably going to end up doing. Um, but I just think, I think let's go top guy available. Great value, Jordan Battle. Um, again, we got guys off the edge. We've been trying to just slowly build in all these different areas. We got the corner, we got the pass rusher, we got the offensive lineman. You know, we're kind of ticking away all these little boxes here. Let's go ahead and get a, a, just a good player in Jordan Battle. I think that makes sense. All right, continuing to wind down now, Buffalo Bills. We got three more picks left. What are we going to do with the Buffalo Bills? Um, we're kind of all caught up here. We don't have anybody that's a, just an unbelievably fantastic value. Um, obviously, we've got a bunch of tackles that we can look at, um, but I don't think that's the direction we're going to go. We've got uh, running back that is available, possibly, um, but I don't necessarily think that's a massive need for us. Um, cornerback is a consideration when you factor in Tredavious White. Um, first of all, not necessarily doing as well as he has in the past, but obviously still a talented football player. But he's just one guy at the same time. Uh, we do have Levi Wallace, but again, I don't necessarily know how much we are massively in love with that pick. Let me just look real quick to see what else we've done at corner. Again, I know this maybe isn't your favorite. I'm just kind of fleshing out 
some different things. 2021, we got a six-round pick in Wild Goose, I believe out of Wisconsin. Oh, yeah, Wisconsin. And uh, Elijah Griffin, who was an undrafted free agent. Um, as far as high resources at corner, Tredavious in 2017 is about all we've done recently. Uh, Fourth-round pick, Teron Johnson in 2018 is the, only, is the next highest pick that we've allocated to that, um, which isn't super fantastic. Um, what else? Let's see. If we had to do something, where do we want to go? Obviously not quarterback, wide receiver. Um, again, interior offensive line is an option. You know, a Kem Ekwanu or whatever, but no. Defensive tackle, I wouldn't mind. In fact, the entire defensive line Ed Oliver has not produced in a way that we would like. On top of that, Vernon Butler, Harrison Phillips, and Trey Hester are not on the team. And I understand you can repay these guys, but I'm just saying at this point in time, not on the team in 2022, as well as Jerry Hughes, um, F.A. Obata, Mario Addison, and Brian Cox Jr. So half of the guys that are along your defensive line are not necessarily going to be there. And you start talking about guys like Jerry Hughes, who are 33, uh, Mario Addison, who's 34. It's not necessarily a gimme that these guys are going to be on their way back. Um, some of these guys are probably just gone, gone, especially on the edge. So I think edge is a consideration. Do we have anybody worth even taking? Let's take a look at Adam Anderson real quick, because I think if this guy can pull it off, if he can be the guy, this might be what we need to do. How did he do in week one? 35 snaps, uh, one pressure, one sack on 18. That's not super fantastic. Not a super great start. Um, You know who I, I like these guys too, Nick Bonito and Brenton Cox. I know they're massive reaches, but I just want to see because they were a lot higher. And again, Nick Bonito, yeah, 90 overall. It was against Tulane, which I guess isn't that great. But six pressures on 28 attempts, that's pretty wild. Um. I don't know. Am I, am I reaching too much? Brenton Cox is another one that I, I don't know. I kind of like that. Should I just be stupid at this point? Cause we're getting down to the line down. Uh, I don't even know words anymore. Let's check Jordan Davis real quick. Let's see if this guy's a stud. Otherwise I might just do Nick Benito. Oh my goodness. There's 500 Jordan Davises, Georgia defensive lineman. Uh, where are we at? There we go. That's the one we're looking for. There's literally like 10 of them. So 28 snaps, nothing super special. He did have ten, uh, two pressures on 20 attempts, which is right at 10%. One of them was a sack, so it's fine. It's decent, but it's just as much of a reach. Um, I'm doing it. I don't care it's a, if it's a reach or not. That's the guy we're going with. I'm curious about Brenton Cox, though. Might as well just look at him real quick. If, if you only cared about that pick, there's your pick. But uh, hang in there with me if you're curious about Mr. Brenton Cox. Uh, terrible. All right, so we're not reaching on that guy. But Bonito, we're doing it up. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers now at 31. Again, I didn't make this list. Don't be mad at me. I know you won the Super Bowl. I know you deserve to be at 32. We're all just going to have to move on together. Um, similarly to other teams like the Steelers and uh, the Ravens and a few others, one of the biggest factors here is how many guys are going to be going bye-bye because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are kind of on a on a uh, year-to-year basis here as far as, you know, kind of, if we win, let's run it back, right? So I don't know exactly how many times we can keep running it back, but I'm guessing not forever. Some of the areas of concern, wide receiver, Godwin, uh, Antonio Brown, Justin Watson, uh, gone. Rob Gronkowski, uh, Gronkowski, I cannot talk, and OJ Howard, gone. Running backs, Fournette, Bernard, and Ronald Jones, gone. Again, I know a lot of these guys are getting re-signed, especially like Ronald and younger guys, whatever. Blaine Gabbert, Tom Brady has one more year. Scott Miller at wide receiver, one more year. Uh, offensive line, Josh Wells, Stinney, Ryan Jensen, Alex Kappa, Earl, Earl Watford, probably not super important guys, aside from maybe Ryan Jensen and Alex Kappa. Um, defensive line, JPP, and Dominican Sue, William Golston, those are very pivotal pieces. And in terms of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' success, defensive line kind of depends on that. I know you got Vita Vea, who's fantastic. You got Shaquille Barrett, who's fantastic. But that that's a big loss to lose JPP, and Dominican Sue, and Golston all in one swipe. So that is a strong consideration. Um, linebacker, Levante David, obviously Devin White is going to be sticking around. He's got one more year before he needs to get paid. But Levante David, I don't think he's necessarily going to be getting paid. Uh, 31, he'll be 32. So probably not. Um, corner, we've got a, guys who are expiring, but they're all relatively young. So we'll probably leave that alone. 
biggest concern is probably going to be defensive line again, which we're getting very thin on, um, or possibly wide receiver, which I don't see a ton of. Uh, we could consider a quarterback, but do we want to just give up and try to find a replacement quarterback? I don't think so. Tight end, Gronkowski again, and Howard. None of these really line up. I don't want corner. Running back could make sense. We could go Isaiah Spiller, right? Um, although we do have Ronald Jones. We're probably going to pay him again. Uh, I don't know, man. This is not great. I don't want an offensive tackle. Uh, we got Werfs. Um, Donovan Smith, he's good enough. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, we could go boring and get an offensive guard. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Wide receiver, you know, we just stack that up. It, again, a lot of this depends who's leaving. Who I do think defensive line is going to be the most important thing. Um, and I don't really know what to do about all this. Um, Adam Anderson. Did we look at Adam Anderson? Why did I skip it? I don't even remember. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. We just got to get out of here. Adam, Ander Adam Anderson. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. He had uh, not super great statistics. I don't know. I don't like any of these guys. Should we just trade out of the round? Should I just be a jerk and trade out of this so that Tampa Bay fans hate me forever? I don't know what to do. Running back again would make sense. I mean, I maybe we'll just do the boring thing and take an interior offensive lineman. Safety is a possibility. Jordan Whitehead, Curtis Riley are supposedly, quote-unquote, gone after this year. Um, Winfield, though, is still there, second-round pick. Uh, and Mike Edwards, third round pick, had a great year. So he's young. So we don't need a safety. We don't need anything. We're fine. Let's just, we'll just skip our pick. We don't need anybody. <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess we'll just go boring. We'll go uh, Equanu at guard. Uh, again, Jensen and Kappa potentially not going to be around. And, and, you know, it's not that we can't pay him, but Kappa is not good at football. So that's what we're going to do. It's a boring pick for a team that's perennially wanting to win Super Bowls. But that's all I got for you, man. Finally, the Kansas City Chiefs, who apparently won the Super Bowl, are on the clock. We've got some work to do here. Um, we've obviously revamped our offensive line. We're probably feeling pretty good about it, I guess. I mean, we got Trey Smith, even though he's a six-round pick. We got uh, Lucas Nyang. We got Creed Humphrey. Our entire offensive line is rookies. And Orlando Brown taking his first crack at left, left tackle. And Joe Tooney, who we brought in. Um, yeah, completely revamp. But we, I don't want to touch it because, you know, again... I don't know. I don't have any reason to say this isn't going to work and we got to go with our tackles here. Um, I, I'd like to talk through it a little bit, but I don't see a reason not to take Trent McDuffie right here. I don't see a reason to. Um, Charvarius Ward was an undrafted free agent in 2018. He's graded out his average for three years in a row. We got Mike Hughes from Minnesota, who's Never really been very good. First round pick, complete bust in my opinion. Legereus Sneed was a fourth round pick, rated out his average last year. Let's see if we drafted anybody that I need to be concerned about that I missed. Um, two guys in 2021, but both of them were undrafted free agents. Uh, DiCaprio Boodle and Shakur Brown. Uh, what else do we do? Anything interesting? Uh, no, we got DeAndre Baker, who's a 2019 first round pick. But... Um, I don't want to overcomplicate this. I think that's where we're going. I think, you know, especially with an offense that can rack up some points, we need to be able to make sure we can cover that on the back end and, and not let people catch up. So we're going Trent McDuffie in the first round to try to bring a little bit of assistance to our offense, and uh, that's kind of how that's going to go. Anyways, folks, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, I kind of think this is the way we're going to do it because it gives me more opportunities. I don't usually have this much time. A family was gone, so that's why we're doing it, but... Um, Again, it's going to be Packers news, it's going to be NFL news, and it's going to be some draft stuff. Um, and if you're into that kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel, please. I'd greatly appreciate it. And again, as many comments as is humanly possible, because this is iteration one. And as we continue to move through, and you guys help me to understand your teams and where you're at and all that kind of stuff. I know I say it every year, but you guys, teams keep changing. I can't keep up with it. Um, we'll kind of get this honed in a little bit, but I appreciate you tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.